Salut! David Wallman here. Today we're going to talk about a piece of software that I use daily and that has helped me tremendously in my job as a guitar teacher. We're going to talk about Guitar Pro. They just came out with version 6. We're going to see what kind of improvements have been made. I'm going to answer the question, should you get Guitar Pro? If you already own Guitar Pro 5, should you do the upgrade? Check out the new features of Guitar Pro 6. Before we talk about the main differences between both versions, I just wanted to point out the main interface of Guitar Pro 5 right here and Guitar Pro 6 right here. Guitar Pro 6 is a little darker as you can see but it's not as cluttered. The workflow is faster than for Guitar Pro 5 because everything is accessible from one window as you can see. I found myself in Guitar Pro 5 having to go into the menu quite a bit not in Guitar Pro 6 so that's a plus. So here we are in Guitar Pro 6 and I'm going to create a new score and I'll just show you how to use it. Create a new tab here. I'm just going to open my score information setting so you can enter whatever you want. This is where you're going to enter all your symbols, your repeat signs, your notes, and so forth. Select the value of the note you desire. Select the string that you want to work with with your keyboard. Just enter the fret number. If you want to enter multiple notes, played at the same time, you can very easily do so by just going back into your track. That way you can build chords. The second tab right here allows you to change the tuning of your instrument so that you can work with open tunings. There are a list of preset open tunings available, but you can very easily make up your own open tuning by selecting whichever string you're, you want to work with and select the value of the note that you wish to have that string tuned to. The possibility to use capos. This has a new implemented feature. If you click on this, you can use a standard capo fret, so decide which fret your capo is going to be placed on, but you can also use partial capo frets, which is great for new types of techniques, so that you can use a partial capo on whichever strings you decide. So the flexibility here is quite remarkable. Now here, the play setting. This right here is going to allow you to configure your sound automatically. And for Guitar Pro 5, you could do that, but it was not as conveniently placed. Here it's right underneath your, your input tab. You don't have to go through a menu or anything like that. It's placed directly here. There's quite a bit, and the sound quality is absolutely amazing. Here's a little lick that I recorded in Guitar Pro 5 using a nylon string guitar. Here's the same lick recorded through the same instrument with Realistic Sound Engine 2, which is Guitar Pro 6. Check it out. Simply drag and drop whatever amp you want, double click on it, and you've got all your settings that you can tweak to your liking. Chord symbol input, you can create some new chord symbols if you want. You've got a lot of chords already made, and then you have Another option here for lyrics. You can print your lyrics right underneath your score. You don't have to go through the menus or anything like that. So that's a great feature. It You can work way faster that way. I'd like to show you something really quick in Guitar Pro 5, which is the previous version. I have a project open right here. And let's say that I want to open another project so that I can compare both or maybe work on both at the same time. I'm going to open my other project here it is, but where is my previous project? It disappeared. That's right, you can only open one project at a time in Guitar Pro 5. Guitar Pro 6 gives you the ability to work on more than one project at the same time. I have one project open right here that I was working on, and I'm going to open another project, and here my second project appears in another tab, allowing me to go from one project to the other really easily. One of my favorite aspects of Guitar Pro is the trainer function. Start at a certain tempo and decide to increase the tempo very gradually every time the loop is being played. It's a great way to practice your difficult licks and uh, memorize new scores. I'm going to select a measure and here I can either create a simple loop of that measure or use the speed trainer which is going to loop my measure and in increments that I'm going to decide. I can now practice my difficult section here 
and it's going to loop itself automatically and build in speed very gradually. As you can tell, I'm thrilled by the new version of Guitar Pro 6, especially after coming from the Mac version of Guitar Pro 5. The improvement is really noticeable, especially in the workflow. If you're coming from a PC version, download the demo and see the new features, see if they're working for you. But if you're on a Mac, do not hesitate to get version 6. There's absolutely no doubt the workflow is just awesome. I hope you found this review inspiring and I hope they had answered a few questions. I didn't go really in depth, but I just wanted to give you a first overview of the upgrade. If you have any questions that I can answer, feel free to leave a comment right underneath and I'll check for you and I'll make sure to provide accurate answers. And if I don't know, I'll find the answer for you. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, salut.